Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today I would like to talk about Roman Subarmalis. Subarmalis Westis. What was Roman Subarmalis? Well, I think we're all quite familiar now by, with the medieval gambeson or Akaton that was used to offer padding underneath metal armour, both with male armour and subsequently with plate armour. I think we're all quite familiar with other kinds of garments that were used underneath armour, for example the arming doublet that uh, were also providing some kind of, some form of pointing apart from the actual padding and extra blunt trauma protection. But what did the actual ancient Romans do? What did they use? So the Roman version of a medieval gambeson was a subarmalis. Now, we don't have any archaeological evidence, mostly because subarmalis were made of organic materials which deteriorate over time. Um, so the only way we can actually understand that subarmalis existed is through iconography. We occasionally find um, statues wearing subarmalis. We have uh, Latin writers mention occasionally supermalis and common sense. As far as we know, the supermalis was constructed in linen, considering those depicted are white, which often denotes the use of undyed linen. We most likely have two possible systems, either a score or more layers glued together, or two layers with wool packed between them and then quilted. Both systems can create a viable dead space behind the metal armour, which provides that vital protection from blunt trauma. As we can see here, we have a sculpture of Mars, the god of war, on an inscription from the fort at Bremenium. Mars wears what looks like a supermalis. There are also many statues of emperors, for example, Imperator, which show a supermalis coming out from underneath their armour. As soon as we understand there are two ways to fasten them, they could be fastened to a separately made line in Subarmalis, or they could be an integral part of a leather Subarmalis. Most likely the Subarmalis was a very important if not essential piece of kit for the Roman Milis for a whole variety of reasons. Now, of course, padding is definitely one of these, particularly if you are a reenactor and you have actually worn Lorica Segmentata, you will know that the shoulder plates can be very heavy on your shoulders. So most likely the padding would have been essential for the shoulders in order to reduce the pain and increase your resistance wearing the armor, considering you had to march with it for miles and miles. However, another interesting factor which has to do with shoulder padding is also the fact that it raises up a little bit the shoulder plates and the armour. Now this is essential for two reasons. It helps avoiding slithering, which can cause chafing in your neck. Of course the Romans used a scarf to provide that, but it's still heavy metal, so you still want... Um, this would provide a better uh, way to avoid slithering. But the other thing is also the fact that the, if you have seen Lorica Segmentata, the top plates, when worn without a subarmalis, tend to have the shape of an angle. Now this can be a problem because they can actually damage the leather straps that are holding them. Now most likely what the Romans did is that through subarmalis they would raise up the shoulder plates, which would then raise up the pectoral plates as well, so that they would actually be straight. They would not form the natural angle that they would form if following the actual shoulder's shape. As a matter of fact, this is one of the most common problems with reenactors using Lorica Segmentata for a long time. Now, a secondary purpose of Subarmalis was not only the idea of avoiding chafing and slithering, but also avoiding soiling. Now, please keep in mind that to soil means when you get something dirty. And most likely, Roman armour would get the tunic very dirty if there was no supermalis on top of it. The reason for that is quite simple. We need to remember that Roman segmentata, but even male armour, was not using neither zinc-plated rings nor stainless steel. So. Roman armour had to be constantly oiled, 
um, that perhaps they even use grease. So all of this practically, if we actually look at the real practicality of the, of the tools of war, uh, would have got your tunic underneath completely soaked and that must not have been pleasant at all. So most likely Subramalis also was used to avoid this kind of problem so that it would cover and protect the tunic from getting dirty. There are quite a few accounts that talk about Subramalis being also waterproof uh, thanks to an actual covering of leather. We also have a 4th century description saying that it was made of thick cloth covered with leather or with a separate leather garment over it for waterproofing. Now the exact form of your subarmalis is entirely up to you if you're already an actor. Padding for the shoulders can be as simple as 12 inches to 18 inches square of sheepskin with a head hole cut in the center. However, a more complete garment would be recommended. Alright then, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Please consider watching other Roman content from my channel. Valete!